The very basic skills that you need to learn in algebra is solving linear equations. And linear equations are equations wherein the highest exponent is 1. Now, examples of linear equation will be x plus 3 is equal to 7, 2x is equal to 3, x minus 1 is equal to 0, and 3 times the quantity of x plus 5 is equal to 2. So notice that all the equations that I have here in my examples has the highest exponent of 1, but you don't see it. Because in algebra, we don't usually write the exponent if the exponent is 1. So this example right here, all of them, has a highest exponent of 1, but we don't write it anymore. So these are all linear equation because the highest exponent of your variable or your term is 1. Now another thing that you need to understand is for x, there is also an invisible 1 by x. So you don't see it because in algebra we don't usually write 1 in writing an algebraic equations. So to uh, solve our first problem in linear equation, let's start with the basic knowledge of solving for x. Now most of you are intimidated of solving a letter in a mathematical problem, but in algebra there's full of x's and y's and z's that you need to solve and uh, for you to be able to understand where the x's and the y's are coming from, let's take a look at this example. This is what we usually see in uh, our elementary math problem wherein we need to complete our equation. So if I have 2 plus a box equal to 7, to complete the equation you need to think of a number that you will need to fit inside the box that will make it equal to 7. And we know that to complete the equation we just need to put 5 in the box so we'll have 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. So the number inside the box is basically 5 and in algebra we don't usually use the boxes. What we use are the variables like x's, y's, z's, and any of the letters in the alphabet. That's why from this form, we will translate this to an algebraic equation. So now we have 2 plus x is equal to 7, and our goal is to solve for x. And to solve for x, which is basically telling us that we need x by itself. And to do that, we need to get rid of 2. And to get rid of 2 in your equation, you need to do the opposite operation of 2, which is the additive inverse of 2, which is minus 2. So if you minus 2 in this side of the equation, you also need to minus 2 in the other side of the equation to balance it out. So whatever you do on the left side of the equation, you may add, subtract, divide, or multiply a number to have x by itself, you need to do it on the other side as well. So 2 minus 2, you cancel it out, it becomes 0 plus x equal to 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. But in algebra, we don't usually write 0 plus x, so now we have x equal to 5. So we are able to solve the linear equation or solving for x. Now, in similar fashion, if we have x plus 7 is equal to 10, to get rid of 7 by x, you need to subtract 7 in both sides so you can cancel this out. 7 minus 7 is 0, and notice that I did not write 0 anymore, so 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. So x, therefore, is equal to 3. And this is how we simply solve a linear equation using one step. Now let's use our new skill in solving for x for these examples. So for number 1, x minus 5 is equal to 2. We need to have x by itself, so I added 5 in both sides. So this cancels out. So I have x is equal to 2, 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. And for number 2, x plus 3 is equal to 10. To get rid of 3, I need to subtract 3 on the left side and subtract 3 on the other side. So 3 plus... 3 minus 3 is 0, so I have x equal to 7. And for my la third example, I have negative 5 plus x equal to 2. I need to get rid of 5 by x, so I add 5 in both sides, so I have x is equal to 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. So it's very simple on how to solve for x once you get the once you get used to the steps that you are working on. Now for the next three examples that we're gonna be working on, the answers here requires you to understand or remember how you add or subtract signed numbers. So for number four, I have x plus seven is equal to two. So the first step is to get rid of seven by x, so I subtract seven 
in both sides. So I can get rid of 7 by x. So now I have x equal to 2 minus 7. Now you cannot take away a bigger number from a smaller number. So when you subtract it, let's say 7 minus 2, we know it's equal to 5. But since you are subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number, your answer will be negative. So therefore, x is equal to negative 5. And for example number 5, we'll use the same principle. If I have negative x minus 5 is equal to negative 12, to get rid of negative 5, I'll add 5 in both sides, leaving me with negative 12 plus 5. Now, since you are adding or subtracting sign numbers, negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So you just need to remember your lesson in adding and subtracting sign numbers so you'll be able to apply it in linear equations similar to this one. And for number 6, I have negative 3 or 3 plus x equal to 8, minus 3 in both sides, I'll have x is equal to 5. Now, once again, you need to apply the rules of adding and subtracting positive or negative numbers to be able to find answers in one-step linear equation. Now, in algebra, not all one-step equation looks the same. So I'm going to present some other forms of linear equation wherein you need to have x by itself using different operations. So for the first three examples that I have, I have 2x is equal to 10. My goal is to have x by itself, so I need to get rid of 2 by x. And to do that, I cannot subtract or add anymore. Now remember, if a numerical value is right next to a variable, you need to divide the num numeric, uh, num you need to divide both sides by the numerical value so you can have x by itself. And that's what I'm going to do with my first example. So I have 2x is equal to 10. I am not adding or subtracting. I am dividing 2 in both sides because that's how I can get rid of 2 by x. So 2 or divided by 2 on both sides. So I have 2x divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So this is going to be 1x, but we know in algebra we don't write 1 anymore. So you will see that our answer is simply x equal to 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And that's what we're going to do with example number 2. So I have 5x is equal to 35. I need to get rid of 5 by dividing both sides by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So I'll have 1x, but since I don't need to write 1 by x, I can simply use x equal to 35 divided by 5, which is 7. And for my third example, I have 12x equal to 5. I need to get rid of 12 by x by division. So 12 is canceled here, and 5 over 12 is a proper fraction. So you cannot um, divide 5 and 12 evenly, so you can leave your answer as x equal to 5 over 12. So sometimes our answer can be whole number, Sometimes it could also be a fraction. So don't be scared when you're getting answers like this. You're not making any mistake because these are still number and in algebra we are presented with a lot of ways on how to answer problems and sometimes it could be whole numbers and sometimes it could be a fraction. Now for the next three examples that I have here, it's also one step equation but it looks different from the first Three. Now you're seeing fractions, and most of you don't like to see fractions in mathematics. But this type of fraction is really easy to solve. So if I have x over 2 is equal to 3, to get rid of 2 so that x is by itself, I'm going to use the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication. So if I divide uh, in the first three examples that I have, I'm going to multiply here to get rid of 2 by x. So x over 2 equal to 3. Multiply 2 on both sides because whatever you do on this side, you have to do it on the right side. So now we have 2 times 2, which is 1. So x is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. And it goes the same way for example number 2. I have x over 7 equal to 2, so get rid of 7 by multiplying 7 in both sides. Now I can cancel 7 by x, and x is equal to 14. And for my last example, I have x over 6 equals negative 
5. So remember your rules in adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing signed numbers because here, if you multiply positive 6 in both sides, the x's will be by itself, or the x will be by itself, and negative 5 times 6 is equal to negative 30. Now we're going to combine all the steps and uh, the process that we uh, learned from the previous slides to answer this question. So this one is a two-step linear equation. So for the first example, I have 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. So to have x by itself, I need two step two, or two steps in uh, getting rid of 2 and 3 so that x is by itself. So my first step will be to get rid of 3 by x. So to do that, I subtract 3 in both sides, and this cancels out. So I have 2x is equal to 8, and to get rid of 2 by x, you divide both sides by 2, and that's your second step. Therefore, x is by itself, and x is equal to 4. So we perform two-step equation because we require uh, two steps to have x by itself. Now for number 2, x over 5 minus 1 is equal to 8. I need to have x by itself, so what I'm going to do is add 1 in both sides to get rid of negative 1. So this cancels out. So x over 5 is equal to 9. And to get rid of 5, you need to multiply both sides. So we added and then multiply to, get to have x by itself. So x is equal to 45. And for the last or for the third example, 2x minus 3 is equal to 6. I need to get rid of negative 3. So add 3 in both sides. 2x equal to 9. Get rid of 2 by dividing 2 in both sides and have x equal to 9 over 2. And for my last example, negative 7x plus 2 is equal to negative 3. I need to have x by itself. So my first step is to subtract 2 on both sides. So I'll have negative 7x equal to negative 5. And the second step will be to divide negative 7 in both sides. So this will cancel out. And negative 5 divided by 7 is positive 5 over 7. And that's how we perform um, solving for x for a linear equation using one step and two-step two, two equation.